So I go to start down. Wait two seconds just to make sure it's live. Okay, start, Dan. Yeah. yeah, you can start. I'll start. All right, thank you, Dan. All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Licensing Act 2003 subcommittee. I, Councillor Warren, the appointed chairman. The other subcommittee members are Councillor Sainsbury's and Councillor Joseph. Please, before we start the meeting, please can I remind everyone that this meeting is being held on YouTube and is a meeting held in public and that the recording may be made available on YouTube in due course. To enable the meeting to run in an orderly manner, I would ask all members of the meeting to keep their video camera switched on for the duration of the meeting and to keep the microphone muted, except when I invite them to speak. Officers will join us to introduce their reports in the usual way. If you wish to speak, then please raise the virtual hand, which is blue and lo is located at the bottom of the participants section. Some people may have a newer version of Zoom, in which case the raise hand fraction has moved from the participants section to the reaction section and is now yellow. Whichever version you are using, please ensure you have raised your hand fraction to indicate that you wish to speak. As with all arrangements, especially those involved in new systems, there's always a risk that they may run into technical problems. And I would ask for all, to all patients if we do. Should this occur, I would declare an adjournment while the fault is addressed and the public broadcast will be paused. If it is not possible to address the fault, the meeting will, may be adjourned to a later date. I will begin by doing a roll call of members of the committee. If members can confirm their attendance. Councillor Sainsbury's. Present, Chair, thank you. Uh, Councillor Joseph. Present, Chair, thank you. And myself, Councillor Warren. We are here to hold a hearing for an application for a new premises license in relation to Neem Park, Fort Meadows, mined by Chem of Scan of Mixology. There are no apologies for absence to record. Have the applicant and everyone who is making representatives today received a copy of the report? Yes, we did. Yep. I shall now introduce the parties to this hearing. Dancer uh, Darren Dolby is the regulation officer for Peterborough City Council. Colin Miles is the legal officer, and Dan Kelly is the committee clerk. Mixology Music Limited is the applicant, and the company is represented by Dan Koshan and Kem Ogzan, director in attendance. Councillor Knight is present and made representation against the application. Liz Borley, Caroline Carol Moores, and Peter Harden are present and have made and represented against the application. Simon Green is present and have made representation in support of the application. The procedure is to be adopted today as is, is as follows. This is a formal hearing, hearing. council rules and procedures will apply. Parties are not required to give evidence under oath, but remind that the deliberate telling of untrue statements is a criminal offence under section 158 of the Licensing Act 2003. Parties will provide evidence to the subcommittee. Any questions, comments or statement must be addressed through myself as chairman. There will be no direct cross-examination by any persons or any other persons. I have the right to interview and interrupt any persons if that person is provided evidence that is not relevant to the proceedings or in relation to the license objectives under the, the which the representations have been made. For well, this application is public safety, the prevention of crime and disorder, the prevention of children from harm, the prevention of public nuisance. The order in which evidence is to be given to the subcommittee as follows. The licensing officer will present the court. The applicant representatives will present their case. Any objections, objectors or supporters will present to subcommittee. The subcommittee members and I may ask questions at any time during the procedure of any person in order to clarify the matter. Once all submissions have been heard and no further questions are necessary, the subcommittee will withdraw to consider all the evidence before determining the application. The subcommittee will provide a final determination today and evidence that a full determination can be, can't be provided today, they will be formally written and sent by post to all interested parties forthwith. 
I will now ask the legal officer to present the report. Yeah, thank you, Chair. It's uh, actually myself, uh, a licensing uh, officer. Uh, members of the committee have before them an application for a new premises license, which has been submitted by Mixology relating to a premises situated under the Automere Parkway Bridge, which is in Neem Park, Peterborough. Representations against the application have been received by nine other persons, and 48 persons have sent emails in supporting the application. We have received no representations from any of the responsible authorities, which include the Cambridgeshire Constabulary, Cambridgeshire Fire and Rescue, Rescue Service, and the Council's Pollution Control Team. Taking into account that all parties have had the opportunity to read the, read the report, it is not my intention to go through the report in fine detail, but to draw attention to the significant areas of the application. During the application process, the Council's Pollution Control Team did engage with the applicant in relation to concerns over possible disturbance to local residents. As a result of this engagement, a number of additional conditions were agreed to be placed on the application by the applicant. These additional conditions have been placed in section 7.2 of the committee report. Paragraph three deals with the authorizations and hours applied for. In essence, the application is for the on sales of alcohol and regulated entertainment at the premises, Monday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. and on New Year's Eve between 10 a.m. and 2 a.m. Chair, unless I can be of any other assistance, I will ask that you commence the hearing in order that members can consider the representations that have been received and take such steps that are necessary and proportionate for promotion of the licensing objectives. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. And now I'll invite the applicants, Mixology Music, uh, the representatives, Kem Oksan and Dan Koshan to present their case. All right, go ahead, Jen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, obviously we're very very grateful for this opportunity and uh it's uh, i think for for us sort of going forward um, based on our history and, and our our own jobs and what we do for a living and have done for for a long time it's in our best interest to to operate a safe uh safe fun well-managed event uh moving forward we have no interest in doing anything uh as, as some person suggested illegally we have no interest in running an event that's that's not going to operate safely and securely uh, and we certainly have no interest in in doing anything that's going to be uh, a problem to anyone i appreciate everyone's kind of made representations and that's why we're going through this process and and hopefully for us we can uh you know we can talk about points we can maybe compromise on certain points and, and obviously for us our, our preferred outcome is uh uh, is to be able to get the license and, and run an event. We realise that that's not necessarily the the, the 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 possible outcome of today, but that's the that's the nature of which we're, we're approaching these. Um, I think that you've possibly all seen our event management plan that we circulated uh, uh, when we put in our kind of statement and our, our a lot of our answers to a lot of the concerns um, that were put forward. So I don't know whether it's a case today of of kind of reading through all of the uh, objections that we had and our, and our kind of responses to that, or if we want to field questions directly on that, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what would be the best format. And I'd like to take advice on that from, uh, from the councillors, just exactly how they want us to do it. But effectively what we've done is we've obviously tried to answer every point in turn, which we're more than happy to discuss and expand upon. Um, and also we're happy to take any questions that anyone might have on our event management plan, which we, we'd like to think is fairly comprehensive given the, the number of people that we're, we're looking to host this event for. I think one thing that we would say is, I think that the main point for us is every premises license that I've operated and managed and run and applied for over the past sort of 25 years, uh, working within hospitality, which has ranged from uh, licensed music venues, nightclubs, bars, restaurants, and, and obviously having a, a current uh, premises license and a, uh, and a restaurant and bar that I've operated for the last seven years, um, you always apply for more than what you need. Um, and I realise that uh, I don't want that to come across as lip service. I don't want to be sitting here saying we're only looking to promote a certain number of events a year when obviously we've applied for a licence that is effectively a 365 day a year licence. Um, but effectively for the kind of events that we're putting on, 
these music events only lend themselves to, to possibly three, four times a year maximum. Summer events, daytime events, 12 till 10, weekend. the weekend events. The only reason that we'd actually run something like that is, is really for, it fits in, in amongst existing pub and restaurant times. And it's important that those times are within uh, good public transport and easily transport, uh, easily available transport times for entrance and egress to events like this. Um, most events that of this nature, whether it be for 1,500 people up to 10,000 strong events, at events like LWE and Junction 2 in London, only operate within those hours simply because getting people to and from the event is obviously key to minimise the impact on the local area uh, and obviously transport and service infrastructure. So I think that it seems a lot of the objections seem to be on and around the idea that we're going to be promoting sort of seven days a week, uh, you know, 52 weeks a year, which is not the case. And I think that that's something that we'd, you know, we'd, we'd really like to expand upon. And that could be uh, additional conditions or a change to the license that, that enables us to operate the kind of events that we want to operate. Um, and obviously we're, you know, we, we represent, you know, sort of mixology, which is our, our dance music brand, which is a nine year strong brand. Um, it's a very, very music focused event. Um, we're not looking to just open the bars and uh, and do something that's uh, that's wet led. We're very, very music led. Uh, obviously the artists that we've got um, in one of the uh, responses to objections, the last thing that Scream did uh, was at the Royal Albert Hall in March as part of the uh, London lockdown uh, series promoted and curated by Fabric and the uh, England Arts Council. This, this is a prominent international and national artist that we'd like to showcase in the best possible format. And the bridge represents a very, very good uh, acoustic, urban, interesting sort of environment to do this in. And it's very, very concentrated as well without being a, a field based event. You know, it's, it's, it enables us to run a very, very contained event underneath the road. So another thing that we'd like to consider in the future, and it's nothing really to do with this particular event, but it is to do with the license. We've been in talks with Nen Park about uh, having a license there for whether it be Christmas markets or, uh, you know, cinema screenings, uh, food festivals, all those kind of things that could go on that are probably a bit more community based events. But that's something that obviously would be part of the license as well. So getting the premises license is not just for events of this nature. It could lend itself to other sort of community led events that obviously we don't have any plans for at the moment, but it's something that we'd we'd sort of welcome uh, chatting to them about. So that's kind of my, I suppose, my opening statement and my, my sort of hello. And I think it would just be sort of waiting to hear from the councillors as to what we want to do now. Do we, do we field questions? Do we go through each individual objection? Do we walk through the event management plan? Um, so we'd, we'd just like to take advice on, on how you'd like to proceed. Uh, yeah, I think what you'll get is at the end of this, once we've heard all the objections and the supporters, you'll get a chance to sum up and answer some of these to, uh, questions that people are going to produce. So at the end of this, you'll get a chance to sum up as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Is there any questions from the subcommittee to the applicant at present? I can answer these as well. Mm. No, no questions. Then I would yeah. uh, invite. Is there any questions down? Because I can't see any. No, no, I can't see any hands raised, Chair. Thank you. Uh, and then I would like to invite Councillor Knight to give her reasons for objecting to the application. Hi everyone, thank you Chair. I understand that Autumn Mere is not in the Autumn Waterville Ward, however, as it's on the border it will affect the Waterville residents and they do have a few concerns. They feel that it's not appropriate location and do not understand why it cannot be held in the embankment where there is already appropriate facilities in place. Alton Mere is a country park and should be maintained as a country park where the environment is left in its natural state. I also have a few concerns on the health and safety of the mix mixology event. For example, how will the emergency services gain access to the area in an event of an emergency? The nearest car park is a good 10 minute walk away. Also, there are hidden hazards of the river as certain areas are not easily visible, especially at night and when people have consumed alcohol. What safeguard will be put in place on the walkover bridge to stop people jumping off it? 
In summary, we feel that Altonmere is not an appropriate choice of location, as there are too many risks, especially when there are more suitable location at the embankment. Thank you. Is there, thank you, thank you, Councillor Knight. And is there any questions from the subcommittee to the War Councillor? No. So you got off nice and lightly, Councillor Knight. Um, and now I will invite Lisa Aborley to give her reasons for objecting to the application. Hello, Chair. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Okay. Um, I'm Lisa Borley. I'm a resident of Church Drive in Autumn Waterville, um, which is the capacity in which I've made my representation. Um, I do also happen to be a chartered environmental health practitioner of 15 years. Um, so whilst I speak to you today as a resident, I do have a, a reasonable um, understanding of the potential risks involved with this application. Um, my main points of concern, um, firstly, were around noise nuisance. Um, I live approximately one mile away from the location proposed. Um, a few Sundays ago, I was able to hear the noise from the motorised remote control boat um, event that was happening at Orton Mere. Um, so there was an event there. It went on for about eight hours um, and it was was pretty noisy. Um, I could hear the noise inside my house, even with the windows closed. Um, and my worry is that if that was audible inside my home, um, how loud would the noise be from a music event like this one? Um, and I expect it, it would be likely to be louder um, than motorised boats um, would be. Um, 10 hours, which I think is the, the sort of length of time the events being proposed to be over, is quite a long time to be putting up with loud music if, if it is loud enough to be heard in, inside people's homes that live locally um, and would be disturbing to me and I'm sure many other residents within that sort of one mile or so radius as well. Um, noise nuisance isn't just about decibels, it's about how, how it affects somebody's ability to use and enjoy their own home. Um, so I imagine this type of music is likely, likely to be fairly bassy. Um, I've never been to one of these sort of events, but I guess that's the kind of music we're thinking about. Um, and clearly with um, that type of music, you're um, going to be looking at noise that produces um, well, long sound waves, so it's, it's a lot more difficult to mitigate than high pitched noises, which produce higher frequency sound waves. Um, so that, that's my worry, really, that it's going to be heard from quite, quite a distance away. Um, if this was going to be a one off event, I, I wouldn't have said anything about it. I really wouldn't have had a concern. It's definitely the fact that the application is, is looking to be more regular than that. Um, the, the seven days a week with no end date is definitely what um, worried me initially. Um, pleased to hear from the applicants that that's clearly not what they're um, intending. However, I, I noted there was um, a, a a proposed condition in the report of 12 events per year. Personally, I still that that's, think that's quite a lot. And I think your, your suggestion of three to four events a year would be far more tolerable um, by people. My second concern really was around antisocial behaviour. And I just worry about what the result of 10 hours of drinking time might look like at the end of the event. Um, would we be faced with loud, leery, aggressive, disorientated people who don't want to go home? Um, I imagine it would be quite difficult to sort of when it comes to kicking out time, so to speak. How do you actually move people away from the venue when it's a, an open public outdoor space? Um, and are we going to be faced with um, groups of people wanting to after party? Um, and, and then with that, what, what happens when the security staff have finished their shift and go home? What's, what's going to happen if the situation is like that? Um, so it's just the potential for any antisocial behaviour, litter, fights, um, all, all that sort of thing that might happen near the water, which brings me on to my third point, really, which, which is um, the concern about the danger of it being so close to water. Um, that, that will be clearly quite difficult to manage. 
there is a risk, I think, that um, intoxicated person or persons could find themselves too close to the water, disorientated, off balance, and perhaps in an aggressive situation even, um, and fall into the water. I understand that there are other venues with licenses that are near water, like charters, the boathouse, for example. However, those venues don't, on the whole, attract such large numbers as this event is looking to attract. Um, and they're generally venues where people People go to sit and eat um, rather than be mingling and um, dancing and that sort of thing for long periods of time. Um, so uh, also, I don't want to see this council investigating a fatality under the health and safety at work at should, should something um, terrible happen. Um, so it's just just considering that really. Um, clearly, the event organiser, Neen Park Trust and this licensing committee need to be happy um, that they could justify why it was determined safe to go, go ahead um, um, and defend that if, if something terrible did happen. I appreciate that there have also been a, a number of positive representations. Um, however, it, it, it's questionable as to how many of those might, might have been um, incurred through um, a, a potential Facebook post asking people to um, email the licensing team and how many actually did that off their own initiative um, and how many of them are actually local residents who, who potentially would be affected. Um, so really, my concern with the current proposal is that I, I think that the, what it looked like um, what was going to be too often um, and therefore allowing this application as it stands, I was concerned it might set a precedent for um, that loud music and drinking seven days a week might be acceptable for any other future applications. And I would just like to conclude by asking the committee to at least consider my points. Um, if you do allow it to go ahead, um, potentially can consider a one event only in the first place and see how things go. Um, and if, if there aren't any issues with um, public nuisance or public safety to then consider more potential events in the future. Um, thank you. That's all I'd like to say. Thank you, Lisa. And is there any questions from the subcommittee to Lisa Borley? No. All right, well, thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, and I will now invite Carol Morris to give her reasons for objecting to the application. Good afternoon, Chair, and um, hello, everybody. My main concern about um, the venue is that in the Peterborough Telegraph, it was reported that it was a, an underutilized area with no footpaths nearby. However, the National Cycle Network Route 63, the Boathouse Trail actually runs directly through that area. There's also a second footpath on the other side of it, which um, gives you access to the other side of the boating lake where there are bins just outside the area of the, um, of the flyover. I regularly, as in daily, exercise my dog in that area. Um, I live in Alton Longville and I walk down to there to exercise my dog. Um, it's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's a very busy thoroughfare. I, when I walk along that path, there are lots and lots of cyclists using it, assuming going to and from work but there's joggers and walkers and of course other dog walkers. There are um, um, children going to and from school if I do walk my dog at those, those sort of hours. And also there's the river traffic, which has a 48 hour mooring just right by the fly over there. And also anglers who are using the river to fish. Um, and I wonder if you can, be allowed if they're allowed to block that path off. I would have thought that was byway, a, you know, a public public right of way. Um, another concern I have is the wildlife. Um, I have a neighbour who is a keen photographer and has taken um, photographs of kingfisher in that area. So one would assume from that that the kingfishers are nesting nearby and they are a protected species under the, um, cons oh, sorry, they're a protected species. 
under the West Wildlife and Plant Act 1981. Um, uh, also, I was concerned about the lack of proper toilet facilities and parking, um, leading to possibly indiscriminate parking. Um, and, and of course, as um, the Lisa said previously, the, the continuous noise that may affect ourselves living in this area. And so I'd like to ask committee if they think it's appropriate that this license is granted, bearing in mind that the pathway is going to be closed off completely. There is no other route to get to the boathouse you have to go up towards Longthorpe and over the flyover, the walkway over the parkway further, further up and into Longthorpe. So, you know, I just wondered how this would be addressed by the um, applicants when they said it was going to be a closed event. So, it, you know, it effectively will close the path off. And, and that's, that's my concerns mainly. Well, thank you, thank you, Carol. And has the subcommittee got any questions to ask Carol Morris? All right. All right, then I will now invite Peter Hardinham to give his reasons for rejecting the application. Oh, hi, everybody. Yes, just trying to unmute there. Yeah. Um, we we live in Autumn Longville Village and we use Autumn quite regularly for walking. Um, we have written a letter um, objecting to this proposal on environmental grounds and amenity grounds. Um, along the lines of the last three speakers, they've all raised most of the points we've raised in our letter. So we wouldn't like to see the um, proposal go ahead on that basis. If the proposal does continue and go ahead, then our main concern is the one of the application being for 365 days a year, um, 10 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. And it seems to me it doesn't matter what mixology says, if you grant the license for that, then it's left wide open for them to hold events anytime they like with all the attendant disruption on everybody and the wildlife around. Um, so we believe that if it does go ahead, there should be very strict limitations on the number of events that can be held along the lines of somewhere between two and five a year. Uh, and I was going to make another point, but I've forgotten what it was. Um, Yes, and we believe that there should be no reason why mixology wouldn't go along with that if what they're saying is true about only wanting to do one or two events a year. Um, on top of that, to be quite honest, there is a better facility down at the, um, at the embankment, which is already there, a point that's already been made. In fact, most of these points have already been made. Um, and I think that the wildlife, it's only been mentioned once, but that's a big part of it, the disruption to the wildlife when you get all this noise and human traffic for those hours. So just to sum up, I think you should reject the application and make them go down to the embankment. If you do award the application, then I think you should put very, very strict limitations on how many events they can have, and the times. I mean, not necessarily 10 in the morning till 11 at night, which is a long time. Okay, I think that just about sums me up. Thank you, uh, Peter Hardman. And has the subcommittee got any questions to Peter? No, no questions. I now will invite Simon Green to give his reasons for supporting the application. Chair, yes, um, we haven't been able to get a hold of uh, Simon Green, so he's not here at the moment, Chair, Chair, so you can move on. Move on. Okay, well, now I'll invite the applicant, uh, Kem Oskan, Oskan and Dan Coshin, to sum up and remind them that they cannot uh, add anything new at this stage. 
Okay, first of all, thank you everyone. Uh, and obviously for the, for, the, for the kind manner in which everyone sort of brought their points forward. We totally appreciate the concerns. And uh, obviously just previous to this meeting, it was our suggestion to the council and our request that we were open to mediation and hoping to be able to talk to you pre this hearing um, and obviously we didn't necessarily want it to come to this but we appreciate that, uh, that that's where we are but thank you very much for the for the way in which you've communicated it um, I, I'm not sure by listening to what a lot of people are saying is, is I'm not sure as to uh, as to how much you've possibly read our event management plan or seen it or or looked at kind of our responses but I do appreciate that a lot of the concern seems to be around the frequency of events or the possible frequency of events. And I absolutely um, totally understand. I think it was uh, uh, Mr. Hardingham that says, you know, it doesn't matter what we say, it's kind of what we do. And I totally understand that there has to be a, an element of trust involved. And, you know, there, there's no reason for anyone to trust us because, you know, you don't know us on, in that respect. So I think that, you know, one of the things that we'd be more than happy to discuss with the council is uh, is an absolute strict limitation on the number of events of this nature that we're able to do. Um, I think that obviously Mixology as a brand in the last nine years, we've done one external event at the at the warehouse, uh, sorry, the Peterborough Arena, Peterborough Arena um, and that was six years ago. And that was a very successful event for 1200 people. Th these kind of events are, are not the sort of thing that we would want to do with any degree of frequency. And I think that we would probably be looking to do a maximum, as we said, of four a year. If that's a stipulation on the con on the license, more than happy for that to be, you know, imposed. And I think that they're, they're, these are the kind of things that we actually said that we'd be willing to discuss in the mediation. I think as well, looking through the event management plan and just on certain points that's been raised um, and, and just certain questions, sorry, certain points that have been raised here that I also responded to in, in our kind of formal response. Um, I totally appreciate that the Telegraph may have suggested that it's an underutilized area. Uh, that's that's not our words. Under the bridge is completely underutilized. There's no footpath that's going to be closed off. None of the public footpaths anywhere are going to be closed off or obstructed. Everything that we, when we say a closed event, underneath the actual road in between the arches, that's where the actual event takes place. That's where the dance floor is. That's where the bar is. That's where the sound system is. None of the footpaths are being closed off. Yes, absolutely, there'll be extra footfall because, you know, obviously we've, we've got people coming in. We've got staggered entrance times, staggered ticket times. So it's not, if we sell a thousand tickets, it's not a thousand people turn up at 12 and a thousand people go at 10. Any events of this nature, like I said, we've got tickets that are only allowed entry at certain times and you would naturally expect uh, a flow of people throughout the day sort of come. Once they're in the event, they can't leave and come back. There's no food or drink to enter the event. No food or drink leaves the event. We've got dedicated steward teams, security teams. We have marshals on the bridge. We have litter picking teams. There's actually quite a lot of in-depth thought being put into the event management plan, and it goes through all of these different elements and areas. Underneath the bridge, walking around with an M Park team, uh, one of the reasons why we chose the location of being under the bridge and not in an open field is because there's no real sort of wildlife or fauna or anything else underneath the bridge of any sort of real concern. Um, we're, can we stop people from jumping off the bridge? I don't think that anyone can ever stop someone jumping off a bridge, but what we can do is we can try and mitigate the risk by having people in and around the area, uh, monitoring people. Uh, we've got a water safety team that also includes uh, a lifeguard team and a boat, uh, sort of looking down the area, going through with the, the NEN port, sorry, going, over the site with the NEN Park team as well. The signage is very, very good there already. The barriers are very, very good already. It's it's a, a fairly well appointed and fairly well signposted area. And with the addition of our teams and the water safety team as well, we've tried to look at all bases um, and make sure that we've got all kind of uh, all points covered as best we possibly can with a with a with a physical member of staff and a system in place. Um, with regards to the noise. We've got a very, very detailed noise management plan that, uh, and, and actually have a noise management team. Uh, I think that uh, I think that it was Lisa was talking about it. Obviously, she's got uh, you know a, a good sort of in-depth knowledge on these sort of things as well. We can work with what we believe to be the legal rights of what we're able to do. We totally understand that yes, with bass-driven music over a long period of time, that can. Uh, you know, cause an issue. We're not looking to sort of impede on anyone's day. The noise management plan that we've got is very, very detailed and we believe it to be 
one that's going to make sure that we're not going to be impeding on people's lives. And also it manages the frequencies as well. Uh, when Dan mentions it's been detailed, uh, he's mentioning the details uh, regards to the certain frequencies uh, where we take measurements all around the area and adjust the frequencies to make sure the base is not at the disturbance level uh, that might be. And we've been working with the noise uh, pollution team um, since we started the application. And we've assumed a very detailed noise management plan. And we have a noise management consultant on the day of the event, taking measurements throughout the day. And the direction of the speakers is not looking at the riverside, the other side. The, there's a lot of specifics we've put into the noise management plan um, that will um, bring the noise levels down. And uh, it's, uh, it's all to the suggestions of the noise pollution team and the licensing application has been uh, edited uh, and all the suggestions from the pollution team has been added to the noise management plan as well. Regards, and regards to the paths, regards to the river safety, regards to bridge crossings, regards to car park, the car parks, two car parks in Orton uh, Mayor will be used for this event. It takes around five to six minutes to walk from the car parks to the event source <coughs> location. We have uh, our stewards all along the way from the car parks to the event. Uh, for later in the evening, it's all lit up as well. We have an uh, open water lifeguard uh, positioned by the river throughout the event. The security will not leave the premises until the last person leaves. So we're not going to be leaving anyone behind. Every single person that attends the event will have a wristband and will know who's coming in, who's coming out. They have an exit and um, entrance and exit uh, uh, direction, which will have uh, marshes all the way along, all the way to the car park, uh, which has been meant. And um, we have a very extensive event management plan. If you go through the plan, you'll be able to see uh, pretty much every single concern that has been raised has been addressed in there. And when we had the SAG meeting, we have um, uh, sort of put all of these information across and we got, uh, you know, good responses that they were satisfied. Yeah. So I think as well, as we say in the event management plan, uh, if you were to look at it and go through it, you'd see that there's provision of toilets and sanitary areas, there's provision of bar, uh, there's food stall areas, uh, there's fencing, there's barriers, there's stewarding, marshalling, security staff. It's it, if, if you look through that plan, you'd hopefully see that uh, a lot of your a lot of your questions uh, it might not completely alleviate your concerns, but it at least shows the actual operations that we've actually got in line to to actually sort of mitigate those circumstances. Um, I think that uh, no, I said that. Going through the specifics, I can see some people have got their hands up, so maybe we'll take some questions, if that's okay. Scott, we can't hear you. I think you're still on mute. You are mute, Councillor. So I've got someone's doing lawnmowers outside outside mine. Yeah, no, we can't. At this stage of the meeting, uh, we will now retire to uh, decide our decision. So we will not take any questions, and we cannot allow any cross examination questions at all. I do apologise, but it was stated at the beginning of the meeting, so we cannot take any cross-examination questions at all. So we will now, uh, if you are, are you finished now? Kem and Ozan, are you finished? I don't, I don't think there's anything more for us to add that, uh, that, that isn't already in the operations plans and, and the documents that we've submitted. I'd welcome everyone and I would say to everyone else as well, you know, we'd happily give people our direct contact details. If they want to talk to us, have a conversation, gladly meet for a coffee at the site, go through things. We're not, we totally appreciate and understand that this is, this is a new thing. It, it looks as well. I think that in hindsight for us, obviously we've applied for a license under the name mixology, the mixology event is something like completely different. So I think the premises license for the actual space is, for the possibility of doing four to five events like this per annum. But the idea of having the premises license when we were discussing it with NEM Park is about the possibility of more community led events. But I totally appreciate and understand that I don't want, I don't want to, like I said, I'm not trying to convince people of what our actions are. And I'd very much welcome, you know, if anyone would like to come and see us, have a coffee when we've got a chance and, you know, talk about these things. If 
you know, that's if it goes ahead. If we don't get the license, then there's no conversation to have. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, for us, this is fluid. This is ongoing. When we had the uh, safety advisory group meeting um, and all parties concerned were very, very happy with what we were doing with a few questions that were raised. And obviously we've been promoting this event management plan with them. We see everything as a fluid document, as a, as a multi-agency approach. You know, we, we have no interest in doing this event or any other events if it's not safe, if it's not good, if it's, if it's problematic in any way, shape or form. And I realised that the, the way of not having a problematic event is to not grant a license. I get that. And yeah. um, just to sum it up, um, myself, Jem Oscar and Dan Cushion, we've been licensees, uh, premises licensees for in total of more than 40 years uh, of license experience between us. And uh, I manage uh, a 1,250 capacity club for 12 years in Peterborough. And Dan managed one of the biggest clubs in the world for more than 10 years, Fabric in London and Matter. And uh, we're probably the most experienced people who can put together an event like this in the in Cambridgeshire area. And safety is our main concern. We are both DPSs uh, at our current venues. And uh, we just want to make a great event. And the times of the event has been suggested. We're not suggesting, uh, we're not proposing or applying for a license for an event that is going for after 11 o'clock. It's a day event and uh, it's uh, controlled, well managed, <coughs> and well prepared with all the risks uh, that is being raised as uh, in recesses. And it's all on the plans as we suggested. So that's 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 what we'll say. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time today. Thank Appreciate you. that. Well, at this point of the hearing, we will now retire to consider your decision. So, Dan, if you can help set that up, please. Thank you, Chase. I'm just going to stop the live stream there, and then we'll break off into a separate room. <laughs>